Okay, hello everybody. This is an interview I'm doing with Tyler Green. Thank you, Tyler, for um, setting aside some time to talk with me about your mindset and about what you do. Um, I'm excited to interview you and enlighten other people about what you think too. So thank you for coming this morning. Yes. <laughs> okay, the first question that I want to ask is just so that you can tell us um, about a little bit about what you do um, and what your life looks like right now. So I'm currently a student at Hope and uh, I also play on the volleyball team and work on campus but um, kind of my main uh, the main thing that I put my passion time and energy into right now is on the side of all of that I um, am a uh, photographer and videographer um, and so I spend a lot of time trying to land freelance gigs or uh, you know shooting events or different things for friends and family it's kind of something that I plan to pursue and ideally make my main career path at some point. Have you done any work um, for Hope since you are a student here? Yeah I've done um, I did a video earlier in the semester covering NSO and uh, kind of showing that to students and trying to um, gain some hype around that event. Um, and I did also a active shooter instructional, instructional video for uh, Dr. Como, something to show to the newer students. I've done a couple of different projects with Hope, so that's been nice. That sounds like a wide variety of like, just totally different projects did you like the wide variety in that uh yeah it definitely gave me some good experience and i'm pretty much the kind of guy where um even if it's not necessarily my style i like to you know go after anything i can get my hands on and uh, for me it's really about building connections so if there's someone i see as a possible connection uh, for the future and they're looking for something that i might not necessarily normally do it's something that i always try to keep in mind and uh, yeah I think it's yeah. a big part of it is building that connection. Definitely. Um, okay, so the second question, from your perspective, what are the barriers that people go through that prevents them from reaching their optimal selves, peak performance, best versions of themselves, happiness, or et cetera? Like what characteristics do these people have that you see that are able to um, really succeed and reach their goal goals and um, accomplish their dreams? Uh, I think the main, not necessarily a characteristic, but the main thing that stops people from reaching their optimal self and uh, you know, really just finding confidence in their self is something that has come, come to light more in the past couple of years with the, you know, the increase in use in social media and that kind of different stuff is how often people are comparing themselves to others. And I think there's... There are tons of, you know, we hear this new word influencers popping up where people are making a living by sharing their lives on Instagram and different social media platforms. And it just makes it so easy for us to look at what they have and, um, you know, compare ourselves to what they have and think about the fact that they're so successful um, and we're not in a position where we can call ourselves that. So I think the, the main setback is how focused we are on other people and where other people are at rather than where we're at and the improvements we can make in ourselves. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I feel like I do that a lot. I'm always just worried about, well, this other person's doing this thing and like they're so successful and it doesn't feel like it holds me back at that, at that time, but then it, I'm literally just wasting that time thinking about what they're doing instead of thinking about what I want to be doing. How do you kind of manage that within yourself and your photography business? Um, well, I think part of it is that I've stopped mm -hmm. using social media entirely for the personal aspect of it. I think um, there's a lot of photographers specifically who have a photography Instagram and who have a personal Instagram and the personal Instagram is for, you know, keeping up with friends and, uh, all their acquaintances a lot of them aren't even friends they're just people that they know and 
I've kind of stopped using that. I haven't used that for a couple of years now. And I think um, that's a big reason that I'm able to, to really try and not compare myself to others is because those that I'm not close with, close with I don't necessarily see what they're doing. And, um, for me, if I'm seeing what all these other people are doing, it's essentially social media is a highlight reel of their lives. And so if I don't need to see what they're doing, I just try not to put myself in front of it. And um, because that's when I really start to feel like I compare myself to others is when I'm going out and looking for what they're doing when I don't necessarily need to be. Mm -hmm. I feel like we, we talked a lot of, of in our positive psych class about how social media can be a really good thing. Um, do you feel like there's a good balance that someone can find? Uh, because you were kind of talking about how like the key for you is to just like get rid of it completely and just like that was just positive for you. And I think that that's great for some people, but do you think that there's a positive or there's a, there's a balance that someone can implement that would help them not compare themselves and get sucked in by it, but use social media for the positive platform that it is because it can do a lot for marketing and for, um, I don't know, just like reaching different people from all over. So can you talk a little about that? Um, for me personally, I think if I'm going to be using Instagram is my main social media platform if I ever use one. So that's what I'm going to be referring to. But if I'm going to be using social media, I need to be using it for myself for it to be effective at all. Mm -hmm. If I'm using it for others to see what other people are doing or just mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, it doesn't really do anything for myself. So I think for a lot of people, it's just about being intentional that um, just like as an example, I'm going on Instagram for this reason. Like I'm going on Instagram to look at other people's photos and uh, gain inspiration or whatever else. But if, if you're just opening Instagram for no reason, I think that's a very easy way to find yourself caught off guard and easily just comparing yourself to others or, you know, just wasting time on Instagram that you don't necessarily need to be wasting. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have some good, really good points there. Um, another question. What are the strengths you see in the people, families, communities, congregations, etc., that are able to, um, reach their goals like what kind of strengths do you see them have um i think one thing that i've seen in those kind of people are and this is a like i can't remember who i've heard this from it may have been i think there's a lot of successful business people that say this but mm -hmm. um they talk about the fact that when you're doing something, particularly in business, if you're looking to make a healthy living and earn a lot of money, you can't just be in it for the money. You have to have, you have to find a why for your what. So a lot of people go into business and think, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a ton of money. But if you don't have a why you're doing something, like to be helping people or it's something that you're passionate about, then it's not going to be something that's like an easy I'm just going to go make all this money. So I think for a lot of people, they really have to find why they're doing something. What if their why is making money? I think for some people that, that can be um, effective, but I know for me personally, I've gone out and I've just tried to make money. And if it's something that I'm not interested in, I've just, once it, once I hit challenges and once it became, you know, a battle and once it became tough, I, instantly dropped it because I didn't have a passion for it mm -hmm. and it wasn't something that I could see myself doing long term so the second the money wasn't there it was just became something that I dropped yeah um from your perspective belief how do people see individuals that reach their optimal selves or performance I think a lot of times it's foreign nowadays to see people who are at that position where they're confident in themselves and you know, they just kind of own themselves. They own the good, they own the bad. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of times for people looking on the outside, that's 
kind of a weird thing and that's since it's foreign i think people often look at it as just like weird and you know sometimes they feel like people are putting on a front when they have that um, clear confidence and mm -hmm. just a a the fact that they're comfortable with themselves um, and so i think a lot of other people look at it as weird um, because the fact of the matter is if you're at your peak performance and you're you know you're really at at your optimal self you're going to be you're going to be the minority in today's society. So I think oftentimes it is looked at as a weird thing. Yeah. Out of the norm, but. I feel like it can even seem intimidating to yeah. see someone that's like so driven and just is plowing through their goals and reaching what they want to do. And, and they just like, they don't really have, and it's not like they don't have regard for other people, but they're just like, I know what I want to do and I'm confident about it. And if you want to be part of it, that's fine. But if you don't, you don't support me, then bye. Yeah. Like it's really intimidating for me to see that as a, as a not very confident person, um, which is just kind of crazy to think that someone can walk around with that much confidence. It's just really cool, but also very foreign, Yeah. very intimidating, especially since our generation right now is worrisome, struck with anxiety and lack of self-confidence so that is just like a weird concept for us yeah definitely yeah um okay uh if you were to help someone uh reach their highest potential what would you say to them how would you guide them uh this kind of goes back to my first point but i would definitely say to keep the focus on yourself uh, and that, so that sounds kind of selfish. I don't mean it in a selfish way. I just mean, again, the point comes back that you can't be comparing yourself to others. Um, and I think, I think so often, especially with social media and how we're able to just get that highlight reel of someone else's life, we see all the good that's happening in their lives. And it becomes something where we look at successful people and we we put them on this pedestal and we kind of look at it in a sense of, you know, while they're so successful, they're at a point that I could never get to. And what people rarely think about is the fact that anyone who is currently successful started at zero at some point. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we're comparing ourselves to others and looking at how successful they are, I think we really need to keep in mind that no matter how much money they're making or no matter how many followers they have or whatever, they, they started at zero at some point, they were in our shoes and, you know, no matter how, how low we feel compared to those people, um, we, we still have the chance to be successful. We're still young, you know, anything can be done with hard work. And I think, really just the main point that I would tell someone to focus on is it's, it's your personal journey um, and nothing positive will come from you comparing your life to someone else's. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone? Because I feel like I have felt like this a lot. I am an aspiring photographer and um, I follow a lot of women that are like 23, 24, 25, and they have 14,000 followers and they started their um, business when they were 20 in their dorm. And so like, I relate to them a lot and I'm trying to do that. But what would you say to someone? Cause I feel like a lot, it just came easier to them. And it's just frustrating for me to hear about their, their journey when I'm in the spot where like, I just feel like I'm not gaining any ground. And I do look at like where they're at and then where I'm at. And I'm like, what's, where's the in-between? Like, how did you get there? Um, why did that seem so easy for you? And it's not for me. Well, I think it's really easy for people when they start following someone who has a hundred thousand followers, it's really easy because they didn't see the grind getting to a hundred thousand followers. It's really mm -hmm. easy for people to say like, wow, like it was so fast for you to get there. It was so easy when in reality, they probably have spent years and years and years and tons of time and hard work getting to where they're at. So 
I would say I'm go from 20 to 25 and gain 15,000 followers and have um, shoots every weekend. And like, how, how does that even happen? I don't even see that happening. You know? Well, I mean, I think that's five years of time that someone could have been spending 80 hours a week really grinding on what they're doing. Yeah. So I think it's, it's really important to understand that no matter how easy it looked for someone else, you know, it could take a ton of hard work for you. And sure, it could have been extremely easy for someone else, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be the same way for you. Yeah. So I think it's all about, I like saying that I am all about having role models and I'm all about having people that you look up to. But the second you start putting your, Sit, like comparing your life to theirs and putting them side by side and seeing what they have that you don't is when it becomes an unhealthy thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, just a couple more. What do you think is the hardest part of self-motivation? What, what do you use to motivate yourself? I think the hardest part about self-motivation for a lot of people is that it has to come from yourself. I think when you have other people that are really supporting you and are really helping motivate you, it makes it a lot easier because when you're down and when you're out and when you're not feeling motivated at all, you have someone there to help motivate you. And I think it's such, it's so tough when you're feeling like crap and you're feeling like you're not making any progress to find that motivation within yourself. So I think that's the biggest challenge and, I don't know. I, I always try to look at it in a forward thinking perspective that like if I'm having one night where I feel totally unmotivated and don't want to do anything, I just try to keep in mind that it's one night in the whole scheme of things. And, um, it's a sliver of time that's not really going to play a huge part in anything. If I just overall keep keep myself motivated and I'm able to keep going that down the road positive things are going to come from it mm -hmm. um the last part that i that i want to ask you since this interview is for positive psych how do you stay so positive i just feel like you don't really i mean everybody gets down every every once in a while but it just seems like you are a pretty positive person how do you maintain that despite um, setbacks and gossip and just like different things how do you stay so positive how's your mindset always in that place I think part of it is that I like to be in somewhat of a position of power and I like to have control of situations and so I think if I find myself in a situation where you know someone else may have said something to me that didn't make me feel great or I heard other people talking about me or something and that's a situation where you know it's really easy to get down on yourself and really easy to start feeling horrible I think a lot of my positivity comes from the fact that I don't give other people control of my feelings and I think as long as I have control and as long as you know, I'm able to decide how I feel. I think I, I always want to be feeling positive. And so as long as I'm in control of how I'm feeling, I'm going to be feeling positive. Mm -hmm. I think it's the second that I allow other, people's to, other people to determine how I'm feeling is when I start to feel negative. And so I think it's all about, sure, other people are going to say stuff. Other people are going to do stuff that's going to make you mad and it's going to hurt your feelings. But who cares? Because it's, it's your life, not theirs. And so I think there's no real point to give other people that weight because in the end, it's me, myself, and I. And the second you start to let other people decide how you feel is when, you know, negativity comes in. Yeah. Wow. Well, I definitely need to try that. Um, there were a couple questions that I was supposed to answer. Um, and one of them was how is this interview impacting me and how, what do I want to change because of this, listening to this interview? 
Um, I think that this just makes me want to like kind of cont- take control of my emotions. Um, a lot of what you were saying about like not comparing yourself to people, um, I related to that a lot, but I think that I'm just so emotional that the emotion part is really what I related to. And just like, I give the power of my emotions to other people and how, how I just feel about something is how I let the reality be. Um, if that makes sense, like I don't combat that natural emotion to choose what I want that to be like, or to choose how I want to respond to something. I just am emotional and I just let that be the reality. So I feel like after listening to you, I kind of want to like take more control of that. Um, I also want to stop comparing myself to others. It's hard seeing so many like really successful photographers doing exactly what I want to do, exactly how I want to do it and not be able to like do it like them because they're doing exactly what I want to do. So um, that's hard, but I will definitely like try to stop comparing myself to others. Um, Yeah. I just really appreciate you talking to me this morning. Uh, You had a lot of really good things to say. So if you have any last thoughts, um, go ahead. I guess one last thing that I was thinking going off of that last question about uh, how there's always going to be people who are down on you and there's always going to be people who have negative things to say. But I mean, just looking back to biblical times and how Jesus was always doing good and he was always helping people and he was living a sinless life. And there were literally people who were out to kill him. And Mm -hmm. um, we, we have it much easier and we live a sinful life. And there's obviously people who are like have bad things to say about us or people who are going to hate on us at certain times, but there's nobody for most of us, there's nobody out to kill us and there's nobody who genuinely wants us dead but some people are going to have some bad things to say about us. And I think it's just all about understanding that no matter what situation in life you are in, and no matter how much good you're doing, there's always going to be someone who wants to spoil it for you. And so I think it's just all about not giving those people the power to do that. Yeah. And like to what you're saying about Jesus is he knew what he was here for. He had a purpose and he, had higher thinking than the people who were trying to take him down. So he was able to just like be above that stuff, not in a cocky way, but in just a way of like, I know what I'm here for and I know what my purpose is and I know what I'm going towards. So what you're saying doesn't really mean anything to me. And that's like, wow, that's like eye opening to me just because I don't really, I think of Jesus as like a source of love and a source of care and like unconditional um, positive regard for someone. But I never really think of him in the sense of like being motivated, not comparing yourself to others, like having a goal in mind. And he definitely did. Like I've never thought of that before. So the other question that I was supposed to ask myself was like, how does this change your perspective on like, reaching your goals or happiness or whatever. And I think that what you just said was like comparing it to Jesus and how um, when he was here, he had a goal and he had people that supported him and he had tons and tons of people that obviously, yeah, like you said, wanted him dead and um, just wanted to tear him apart. But he was able to keep his goal in mind and just have higher thinking and not let the, because he was tempted by sin. I mean, Satan literally took him on top of the mountain and tried to tempt him. And I think that we think he was just like, Oh, this is just games. Like I don't, it's not even hard, but I think that it was hard because he was part human also. So he was tempted to like be taken down by these Pharisees that are speaking poorly about him. And um, I never, I've never thought about him having a goal and being strong willed on his own and I think a lot of it was like he was um he was getting his strength from the father and the holy spirit but we also have that so like what 
I mean, Jesus was part God and part man, but if he can do it, he's setting an example for the people that are coming after him that he died for that are just like humans. And like, we can, we can also do that. It's very interesting. I've never thought about that before. I've never seen him as like, because I always think of the people who have goals and are trying to be successful as just like entrepreneurs and photographers and whatever. I've never thought of like Jesus as someone who had a goal and didn't let people get in the way of it. Wow. That's very insightful. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I'm sure that lots of people, if I share this, will be enlightened by your perspective and your mindset. Um, I am glad that we got to talk and I got to hear a little bit about what goes on in your head, um, about reaching peak performance and happiness. And um, I hope that we can talk again sometime soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye.